of freedom. Jesus told the man at the pool of Bethesda, he said, do you want to get well? He said, you don't understand. I don't have a man. And Jesus was saying, yes, you do. He's standing right here. So Jesus is telling you, yes, you have someone. It is him, the son of the living God. He's still here. He still has America. And he told the man, rise, take up your bed, and go your way. Rise, he said. You have to rise up in spirit. Hallelujah. You have a God, a real one. And the world is about to find it out. Hallelujah. Watch the greatest might that a man has in his submarines. And watch what takes place. You have a God. And the world is about to know it. Hallelujah. Well, give the Lord a praise in the house. Hallelujah. Woo, how many is still excited? How many is excited from last night still? The excitement just stayed with us all day. I'm telling you, it, it, it transferred into the 11th hour today. Uh, how many of you watched the 11th hour today? Was it, was it not so strong? You could feel it. And, and there's nobody else here at the 11th hour but, but just, just the team and the ones running the camera and John that you all met here. And, and, and that's it. So I know if we felt it here that you, you felt it right on the other side of that camera. So it, it has just moved into tonight, and we are not done. We are just getting started. Amen? Amen. Well, how many knows what time it is? It is offering time here at Church International. Hallelujah. Well, all of you watching by live stream, welcome in tonight. We just want to say how honored we are that you would tune in with us and that you would join this celebration. It is such a joy to have you here with us. And remember, like always, just because you are not here physically does not mean you are any less a part of what God is doing in this place tonight. You just simply stretch your hands toward wherever you're watching and we send it straight through the camera and you just say, I receive it in Jesus name and you become a partaker of what is going on in this this building tonight. And so if you are wanting to give uh, with us tonight to sow your seed, then if you're watching by our website, which is churchint.org, and you're watching by CI online, there's a blue button at the bottom of the screen that says give. You click that button and follow the prompts from there. Also, if you're watching by YouTube, the link is in the description. You click that link, follow those prompts from there. Also, if you're here physically or watching by live stream we have text to give and the number is on the screen or you can look that up on our website also that is safe easy and secure in a way that you can participate in this corporate time of worship amen Amen. So as you're getting your seed together, and also you can do the old-fashioned way with an envelope. And if you need an envelope, raise your hand if you don't have one, and somebody will see to it that you get one. You know, we forget that the old-fashioned just works just as well. And <laughs> it's that old-fashioned God, right? That's it. It was him all along. It was him all along. Well, tonight I began to... to ponder last as soon as I got home I was like Lord I was like it was a it was a great message that that you gave over the offering last last night I said I said what what else is there to say <laughs> I mean I got people excited over the camels are coming everybody's pumped and they're excited I was like 
do I, I, I can't let them down. <laughs> I was like, so, and, and of course, he never lets us down. And so he began to prompt me to do something that I do all the time if there's ever a significant year whether it's a birthday or whether it's something I, or, or a time like this or, or just a, a specific number. And I look up the corresponding psalms to it. And just to see, some of them you don't want to correspond with your birthday number, but some of them you do. Like when I turned 23, that was a great psalms. But, um, it, you know, you, you look... And you correspond with everything, and I, I begin to, to look up Psalm 22. And Psalm 22 is what the psalmist recorded, what Jesus said on the cross. When, when it starts out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And he begins to go on down the line, and he begins to explain what is happening to him as he's dying. That is what the 22nd Psalm is. And it, it didn't even occur to me when I looked up Psalms 22. It didn't occur to me that that's what it is. And I've, I've read it my entire life. But, and then I, I began to look and I said, well, this is the crucifixion Psalm. This is when Jesus was hanging on the cross and he was dying. He said, I am the fulfillment of the 22nd Psalm. That's what he was saying in the scripture because everything that the psalmist David recorded is what Jesus said years later on the cross. And he was telling everyone as he quoted it out loud, I am the 22nd Psalm. I am the fulfillment of this. This is what is happening to me right now. He talks about the bulls of Bashan uh, coming up and he talks about the dogs and, and he's, he's talking about these things that are trying to rip his, his soul, his spirit out of his body. He starts to talk about how his heart is melting like wax into his stomach. He said, I'm nothing but a worm. And he begins to explain what he looks like, what he feels like, every single thing on the cross. And he's telling us, this is me. This is what I'm doing right now. I am the fulfillment of the 22nd Psalm. And, and I'm, I'm putting it into motion at this moment. Well, I begin to ask the Lord, Lord, what, what are you saying showing me Psalms 22? He said, this is what you need to remember coming into the year 2022. You you need to remember that he was the fulfillment of the 22nd Psalm. He was the one that not only when he got up there and he, he bore your sickness, he carried your pain, he became your sin and up on the cross, but he also was the fulfillment of the one who destroyed the poverty mentality. He destroyed the poverty spirit that would try to come against you. Also that day that he said, I'm the fulfillment fulfillment of this psalm. He said, I destroyed lack. I destroyed debt. I destroyed these things. You know, when you get into a mortgage, you, do you know what mortgage means? It means a death agreement, a death contract. That's what it means. He's saying, I was the fulfillment for that for you, that you wouldn't have to sign a death contract because I went into hell and I beat death for you. And you don't have to tie yourself to it anymore. So as you're going into the year 2022, remember the 22nd Psalm. Whenever the enemy tries to face you with something, whenever he tries to call you into the ring and fight you with death, with, with lack, with, uh, with poverty, you stand on the 22nd Psalm and you say, no, no, my God fulfilled this Psalm for me. And so I stand on this that not, I can be prosperous physically, financially, spiritually. I can have full prosperity because my God fulfilled this for me that day when he died on the cross and then when he died and, and he went into hell he paid the ultimate 
price for you. And, but he didn't stay there because the Holy Spirit roared down into hell and he shadowed Jesus and he pulled him up out of hell. And when he came out of that tomb, he said that he said that all power in heaven and earth belonged to him. He said that I have the keys to death, hell, and the grave. He was saying these things. So going into the year 2022, all of that is beaten. It's all beaten. And if you'll begin to speak that into your future in these few months that we have, that we're ahead of time, if you start speaking those things out of your mouth in faith, what God has paid for you and what he has done for you, yet you don't understand, he fulfilled this. He fulfilled it. It's not just words in the scripture. He fulfilled it. And so if you're speaking that fulfillment into your future, then by the time you get to 2022, it's already established for you. So tonight as we give and as we sow, remember what he paid for you. Remember, he doesn't want you in lack. He doesn't want you in poverty. He doesn't want you in a death agreement. You know, you might have, that might have been where your faith was at at the moment. And because he is an absolute good and merciful and gracious God, he met you where your faith was. But as you grow in the wisdom uh, and the knowledge of who God is and what he did for you and, and what he is continuing to do and who you are as, as a part of his body and who you are in Christ Jesus, then your faith level begins to rise. And when it rises, God meets you at every level where your faith is. And so one day you're going to get to the level where it was your only faith was to be in the death agreement but now it's to obliterate that contract and to obliterate that death agreement and guess what God is there to meet you where your faith is so if it is in your dream and if it is in your vision to get out of that death agreement in 2022 whether it be it with your house whether it be with your car whether it be just to have a steady paying job in 2022 then you start declaring that. Why? Start declaring what he did for you in the 22nd Psalm. And when the enemy says, no, you can't do this. No, you can't have this. You say, wait a second. This says that my God did this for me. This says that he paid the price for me. In the 22nd Psalm, it said that they cast lots for his clothes. They rolled dice. They gambled for his clothes. Why would they gamble for a poor man's clothes? I've, I've never seen anyone gamble for a homeless man's clothes. That, but they might be gambling for something that came off Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills. But they wouldn't be gambling for some, something else. He said they're rolling dice for my clothes which means he gave up every single bit of prosperity he had financially, physically, spiritually so that you could have it and so that you could go into 2022 with that mentality saying I am the head I'm not the tail I'm above I'm not beneath I'm prosperous Poverty, Poverty, move out of my way. Step aside. Let me walk through to fulfill my destiny that God has set before me. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise tonight. Come on, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Come on, don't, don't lose this. Don't lose this. Your faith is high. Your faith is high. God's going to meet you where your faith is. He meets you wherever it is. So tonight, as you're giving, I want you to hold it up. Come on, we're going to speak the word tonight. Luke 6, 38, over our giving. It says, give, and it shall be given unto me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto me. 
my bosom. For with the same measure that I meet with all, it shall be measured to me again. You say, I believe it. I receive it. I call it done in Jesus' name. Now, if you're a tither, whether you're tithing tonight or whether you're just a tither, period, we're going to go ahead and speak our promise into the new year. Malachi 3.10 says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field saith the Lord of hosts and all nations shall call me blessed for I shall be a delightsome lamb saith the Lord of hosts say I believe it I receive it I call it done now say this I call it done in my 2022 and you better be waiting for me when I get there in Jesus name amen give the Lord a shout of praise hallelujah well, you can bring your gifts tonight we have two places up front a place in the balcony and I don't I no overflow tonight so we're all in here together amen Amen. Come on, just don't let that excitement die. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Come on, you got it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Man, I'm going to tell you something. Music like that. And music like what we did earlier. That gets attention, doesn't it? Amen. Are you excited? Yeah. Is that, is that good? You have that? Yeah, play a little bit of that right quick. Just, just. Just for just because it just came up in my spirit. Yeah, just turn it up though. Be sure it's up when you start it. But you listen to something, a covenant, a little bit of a covenant song. If we can do it, if not, it's all right. Oh, yeah. Amen. 
I just, uh, I came up in my spirit back there a while ago, and I, I wanted you to know that God made a covenant with this nation, and he has not forsaken it. Maybe I can tell you something in a few minutes, the Lord gives me, gets me there where I can. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, you got your Bibles with you? All right, we're about to go somewhere now. Hold it up like this. Give the devil a nervous breakdown. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I realize that all, you know, this is not per se the service like that. But I'll tell you what. I thank God for every American soldier. That's ever drew a breath. Hallelujah. I just do. <laughs> all of them right now, all that's ever been, all the way from Washington's army to now. Praise God. We thank you. Thank you so much. We can gather here tonight because of God and you. Amen. Now, Lord, give us eyes to see and ears to hear that we can learn your word together as a family. I give you praise and honor and glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, I want you to open your Bibles up to Matthew chapter 7. <clears throat> and um, we're going to head somewhere tonight. And we're going to, I don't know how long it's going to take us to get there. But we're headed there. Look at your neighbor and say, we're headed there. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 7. Praise God. Now, I 
Let's start in verse 13. No, well, we'll start in verse 10. Or if he ask a fish, will he give him, this is Matthew chapter 7. Yeah. And if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Therefore, because of this, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Then he starts talking about the prophets. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Now, it seems like that suddenly he just starts talking about something, but actually, he's already mentioned the prophets. Then he starts in verse 15, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Now notice this. Then he comes on and he says, You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. And to show you what time frame he's talking about here, he says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name have done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Now, I want you to, to notice something. Here in Matthew 7, 15, he's talking about false prophets. It's false prophets. And notice it said they come in in sheep's clothing. But inwardly, they are ravening wolves. You'll know them by their fruit. Now, would you listen to this? This is talking about Yes, primarily prophets he knows or he don't know. This chapter at least from 10 through 23 is talking about prophets. Now, when he got through teaching, the people were astonished for he taught them as one having authority, it says. Authority over what? The prophets. He could even judge the prophets. They answer to him. Now I want you to notice something here in the scripture that we read. That these prophets are in sheep's clothing. Not shepherd's clothing. See, they come in, and people always say, well, you know, they'll look at a pastor or something, they'll say, false prophet, false prophet, wolf in sheep's clothing. Wait a minute. Sheep is not the shepherd. So the false prophets come in among the congregations.
They are ravenous wolves. And they're among the congregations. They like to infiltrate there. They are rapacious. Uh, ravenous. It means they are aggressively greedy. Seeking to snatch someone up with their words. Now, well, I'm, I'm going to teach a minute and we'll get there. It means they're an extortioner, a robber. It also means to catch up or to take by force, to catch away, to pluck, to catch, to pull, to claim for oneself eagerly. It's the same word we use for catching away of the church. It said these false prophets come in to catch you up. It's going to turn out good in a minute. <laughs> now, the false prophets come in to use as extortioners. They're like extortioners to catch you away in their thoughts, their ideas, using their words for this. Their prophecies are for their own gain. They will use them for you for gain in their own lives. Jesus said, you'll know them by their fruits and you will become thoroughly acquainted with them by their fruits. You will know them adequately, recognize them by their fruit. It carries with it the uh, interrogation sense. He said, you are to interrogate them. Now, remember, this is all going on in the congregation, not on the pulpit. Oh, well, Brother Robin, you got to give us, make a shout here. Now, I, I will, just hang on. Okay, to interrogate question, you'll know them. You will perceive them by interrogation. Ask questions. Because inside these false prophets are cruel, greedy, rapacious, destructive men. But it also has an akin word to it in the Greek, which talks about light. Now we're about to make a jump now. Remember he's talking about in the last days. <laughs> 